Good morning, Vine Church. Good morning, our online community. I want to say thank you for connecting with us today. Thank you for joining us as we worship God together, as we gather from our, our living rooms and, and homes. We're together. God is with you. God is right in your presence right now. And now we're a larger community focusing on who God is, focusing on this is love. I wanted to just share a quick scripture and then we'll start our day. Psalm 119, 76 through 77. Now let your unfailing love comfort me, just as you promised your servant. Surround me with your tender mercies so I might live, for your instructions are my delight. I'm so glad you joined us. Tammy, Tim, Sherry, all watching. That's right, just let us know what you're thinking. Let us know what you're feeling online. If you have any questions, if you have any needs, We'll respond to you today or tomorrow for sure. This is a place where we can talk with each other. We can just share what's going on in our hearts and requests. And also have a message around God's word and around this is love. So let, let's pray together right now. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that you've given us this ability to still meet together as your people, to meet together as your church, Father. Father, just overwhelm us today with your hope, with your comfort, Lord. Give us a peace in this pandemic time, Father, where we're, our stresses and anxieties are at its peak. Lord, help us be your people to share your comfort and your love today, Father. We ask this in your name. Amen. It's good. Hey, Doris, Marg, Katie, I'm glad you guys are joining us today. And then if we were at our on-site church, this would be a time where we would take a, an offering. Today is Benevolent Sunday. It's our third Sunday of the month, believe it or not. So we would have a benevolence offering and our regular offering. So just a, again, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your generosity and your support during these times. The Vine Church is very active during this time. While we can't meet physically, we're having Zoom Bible studies, men's life group studies. We're having a Zoom prayer meeting after church. Hey, Chad, glad you're connecting. Andrew, thanks for joining us today. Um, so we're real active. So there's a number of ways you can give. You can just send a, a paper check to the P.O. Box 163 in Smithsburg. You can get the Tithely app, T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. Great, easy way if you use that app. You can just designate benevolence right there or regular offering. And then, of course, use your bill pay. Just a number of different ways, but I can't tell you how much. We need your support, but your generosity has been overwhelming during these past few weeks. Thank you so much. So I wanted to get into our message. Hey, Luke. Glad you could connect with us this morning. This is love. That's our focus today. Change. Think about that. Change. I'm not talking about what's rattling around maybe in your pockets or your purses or, or your car console. I'm talking about your life. So take a journey with me for just a minute and think about your life. Now, the hard part's going to be to think about it before mid-March. Go back to January, maybe your New Year's resolutions. Go back a year. Think about what was going on in your life, who you were. What, were there, what was your job like, your circumstances? How were you reacting to things? Were you grumpier, more loving? Were you angrier or more gracious? Now, get that picture in your mind for a minute. Hey, Tom, thanks for joining us. Take that picture and now think of the COVID-19 situation and all these circumstances, this nationwide isolation that we're all experiencing, the lack of being able to, to buy toilet paper, the stress of seeing empty shelves with things that you need like butter, napkins, having to go to school online, having to work remotely, the kids are screaming, dogs are barking, your cats, they're walking on your keyboard as you're trying to do your work, that can create stress. Is it making you grumpier? Hmm. More frustrated or more gracious? 
change. So last week, we talked, it was Easter. If you can remember that far back, it was Easter. We talked about how the resurrection changes everything. And maybe this resurrection whole thought is helping you change how you're reacting to all the changes that are going on in your life currently. And maybe you're a different person than you were this time last year. Well, let's get into that. Because the resurrection, it's because of the resurrection, because of what, what happened at Easter, that we understand more and more what the cross is really all about. All about. Jesus entered into our pain, into, entered into our shame, and took that evil upon himself. You can see a cross in the background by the TV. Think about that. And the pain that associated with it. He did that for us. God is announcing his love, that, and he's also announcing that a new creation is going to come. It will be better. There will be a better day. And you know, we're going to get through this coronavirus, this COVID-19. We will. God's with us. He's going to make sure of that. And we can say that this is love. The way is connecting us together. You know, death is a great tragedy. The great tragedy of all human experiences. When we think about death, it's the ultimate game changer, right? A lot of you have already experienced tremendous loss with death. Some watching right now have experienced the emotions, the emptiness, the, the yearning to meet loved ones again. And death. Now think about this. Is, is this you? Have, did you? Did you read Reader's Digest? drama in real life back in the day. Now think about it. They were great. Inter interesting stories. They, they could, and if you let your imagination run, when you read those stories, it's like you're taking a leisurely walk and then something deadly happens. A walk by the sea and then you get bit by a rare crab that causes a, a deadly infection. A hike in the mountains and the, and the weather breaks and in comes this extreme cold weather or you're you're taking a road trip, going to maybe a wedding, and all of a sudden, semi-tractor, tire blows out, and everything happens from there. Drama in real life. But are you that person that is a, a catastrophic iser that's always seeing the worst possible outcomes immediately? Or are you making lemonade out of the situation, trying to make the best of it? You know, we all live under... The shroud of death, as the saying goes, no one gets out of here alive. We want to avoid aging completely. Think about this. The, the age-defying industry, right? All the commercials on TV. Think about Bob Dylan's song, Forever Young. And then you've got all these commercials with usually people in their teens or 20s saying how great this age-defying cream is working. And you know what? People in their 30s, 60s, and beyond are getting sucked into the lie. They're trying to look like they're 13. It's not going to work. But we still do it. But all kidding aside, the fear of all fears is death. It is. Sociologists have always said that every society on the planet have these immortality symbols. Think back to Egypt and the pyramids, Taj Mahal in India. In America, we do it a little differently, right? We have big houses, big cars. Somehow that's going to make a difference. We think of trust accounts, retirement funds. We want to make a name for ourselves and leave a lasting mark, maybe a legacy. But as far as immortality symbols, they fall woefully short. Death is this great ending, in a sense, this great finality. So Jesus went to the cross on Good Friday. It was anything but really good in a sense. Think about it. His followers lost their dream on that road to Emmaus. They hung their head lows. They had hoped that Jesus would be the Messiah. But now their hope was ended. Their heads hung low. Their bodies lifeless. Their heads just felt, their hearts felt, felt hollow. Eyes swollen from all the weeping. How could this be? These were his disciples who were with him. 
If you've ever seen the movie Les Miserables, there's this song where Fantine does, she sings, I dreamed a dream that cannot be. Now it's a horrible rendition, but the point is, it captures this kind of heartbroken despair of these broken dreams. But then we realize this Good Friday had this moment. If you let, if you let this really think in of what's really going on, the darkness and tragedy of Good Friday helps us capture, really, if we're honest, how we feel in life so many times. We're overwhelmed by the brokenness, overwhelmed by certainly this pandemic right now. We get stressed out just to go to the grocery store because things aren't there that we need. All these stresses were filled with discouragement and despair. We're aware of this darkness and asking God why. There's worry in our hearts. Death is the end of all possibilities, or so we think. If there's no answer for death, then what's the point? But on that first Easter morning, God our Father showed the world that love is stronger than death. And that's our message we get to proclaim today that love is stronger than death. You go to the New Testament, especially in Acts, Paul wrote Acts, he makes a point of saying, God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. Hey Mike Farrell, Shannon, glad you guys, hey Kyle, glad you guys are joining us today. Y'all just let it, keep letting us know you're connected, let us know what's going on. If you have any needs, just reach out and let us know. So I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles, your Bible apps, to Romans chapter 8. It's in the New Testament, verse 37 to 39. This is a great verse. I'll wait a second till you get there. Starting in verse 37. Now in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced, I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels, nor demons, nor present, nor future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is powerful, powerful. Hi, Alyssa. God the Father did not abandon his son to the grave on Good Friday. Jesus was actually raised from the dead, and this is important. We are conquerors over death because of the love of God, because this is love. A few other spots in the New Testament that should really drive this home. In Acts 5, the God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging on the tree. God exalted Jesus, going to Acts 13. We proclaim you the good news. What God promised to our ancestors, he has fulfilled for us, their children. Jesus was raised from the dead, never again to be subject to death's decay. What God promised to our ancestors, this is a promise. It's a promise for, for you and I. But can we embrace it? Can we really feel the promise? Can we really feel the love of God in this promise? See, the resurrection of Jesus is not just good news for Jesus, raising him from the dead. It's good news for the world, all inclusive. Jesus is reaching out and saying, please come to me. Everybody. It's not exclusive as so many people think. It's for everyone because of God's love for us. It's for you and for me. But some Christians weren't sure. Even back in Jesus' day, when they were with Jesus, they just weren't sure. They wondered if it was all really necessary, if the resurrection, if, was it real? They questioned it. Wasn't the, Jesus just a good teacher? Maybe a real good spiritual guy, a good rabbi? And why did it matter if he was really raised from the dead anyway? These are all legitimate questions they were asking. And so many people today say the same things, ask the same questions. So these questions Paul was addressing, especially to this church in, in, in Corinth. You know, it could have been a, a church in, in Hagerstown, in Smithsburg, or Waynesboro. People were having the same questions. In 1 Corinthians 15, 
starting in verse 20, says, But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who've fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man also has come the resurrection of the dead. You see, the resurrection of the dead is the defeat of death. And Paul calls death the enemy because, let's be clear, death is not a friend. It's not a doorway into eternity, and this is why. If you've accepted Jesus right now, your eternity started. It started on the day, it might have been a year ago, it could have been 30 years ago. On that moment, your eternity with Christ began. And we get to be here on earth kind of living out the first part of that eternity. You see, death's been destroyed because of Jesus' victory over death. Now imagine being free from this fear of death. Imagine all this, this monster in the room that you often talk about. And imagine it gone because of what Christ did. Because there's not that stress and anxiety over it anymore. And you know, in history, this, this power over people because of death has been abused by tyrants. Think about so many times, Caesar after Caesar after Caesar, holding death over people because of this. Think about what certain groups are doing, killing Christians. Go back to Columbine. Go back to just this past week, Muslim groups in Nigeria, just persecuting, killing Christians. What's happening in China with what the government's doing, the church is just tearing them down, using death to get them to change. But it's not working because that doesn't have any power over someone who truly loves Christ. The power of death is gone, and it's because of the resurrection. So it's important to understand what really happened to Jesus he didn't just have a near-death experience and, and then get resuscitated. He didn't just pass out on the cross and then was refreshed by the cool air in the, in the stone tomb. It didn't happen that way. The piercing of his side that caused that blood and water to flow out is a final medical note of his finality, of his true death. And then the, the disciples were not hallucinating. The 500 people that saw Christ at the same time did not have this huge simultaneous hallucination. It doesn't work that way. Jesus' body was familiar, yet somehow different. It caused him to pass through doors that were locked, and yet he was hungry. Thomas put his hands in his hands, his wounds, and his side. All this was real. It happened. And then Paul says this. This is an extremely important section of Scripture. So I want you to highlight it in your Bibles, your Bible apps. Write it down as a reference. New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3-8. through 8. I'm going to read that. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with Scripture, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with Scripture's, and that he appeared to Cephas, who is Peter, and then to the twelve. And then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at the same time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. And then he appeared to James, then to the apostles, and last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me. Make a note of this passage. Write it down. Because this is the most important passage regarding Christ's death and resurrection. It's the earliest, which means closest in timeline to the actual events that happened at Easter. It's the most complete statement. A lot of theologians call this the, the actual foundation of the Christian faith. Because this is key. This is critical. There is no other way to heaven. There's no other way to God except through Christ. This is not, you know, Pastor Mark's words. This is not the brethren in Christ's word. This is Jesus talking. There is no other way. And Paul's making this very clear. What happened, that resurrection is so important. The resurrection is God's new beginning when all possibilities have ended completely. God's new beginning. And God's given you that new beginning right now. 
See, it's not like when Lazarus was kind of resurrected, you know, he was kind of resuscitated. It's very, very different. Do you need a resurrection in your life? Do you need something to change right now? Think about that. This is possible for you. It's possible before you, for you because of Christ. Maybe there are some places in your life that have kind of gone off the rails. Maybe you've been in, in the house so long you just can't kind of really get your head around what's going on. You, you've, you've kind of lost your hope. And something needs to change. You, your heart, needs to be resurrected. Last thing we learn about this is that resurrection is a gift. And he's there for you. Yeah, we saw it in 1 Corinthians 15, for, as man, for by a man came death, that's Adam, when sin entered the world, and through Christ, through Christ, all can be made alive. That's what we're talking about today. You can have a new way forward, a new hope, because of Jesus. You didn't do anything to deserve it. You can't do anything to earn it, nothing. The resurrection doesn't emerge out of your potential. Thank goodness the resurrection is not an achievement and no one can raise themselves from the dead. And I'm grateful for that. I can't become resurrected. I need Jesus. The same, I need Jesus the same way you need Jesus. Because everyone that's standing at the cross, we're all the same, all the same. We need Jesus desperately. We need to feel that resurrection life because of Christ. One day, everybody in Christ, we're all going to be raised to those new, new glorious bodies, bodies that are kind of unclear exactly what that's going to be like, except it's going to be new, it's going to be better, it's going to be perfect, that's going to be a good day. Romans eight eleven says this, If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies, through his spirit who dwells in you. This is amazing stuff. We have the Holy Spirit in us now. If we've truly accepted Christ as our Savior, we can do this today. So as we wrap up, this Holy Spirit is bringing us new life today. The same love that did not abandon Jesus on the cross on that Good Friday is here for you because of the power of the resurrection. He loves you. He loves you with a, an unfathomable, everlasting love. This is the truth of the resurrection. There's no other way. And we get to do this together. We get to do this as a community, even, even when we're online, even when we're having Zoom meetings, Zoom Bible studies. It happens because Jesus took death and let its power exhaust fully on himself so that we don't have to go through that. And that's because of love. His father raised Jesus from the grave, proven his faithfulness, proven out the promises. God's promises are true all the time. And there's nothing, there's nothing at all that'll ever stop the love of God from being part of who we are. Now think about that. Can you say this with me? Can you embrace these next words fully in your heart? I mean, really deep down in your heart, in your mind. Kind of wrap your head around this for a minute, okay? You can say, gracious God, you've loved us with an everlasting love. You sent your son because of your love. You laid down your life willingly, and in your death on the cross, it's because of your love and resurrection. I want to let you love me, Jesus. We want to be in Christ, have that Holy Spirit dwell in us, come alive in us. Bring your resurrection life to me. Make my heart change. Make the way I respond to things change. There's a better way. And that better way is because of the resurrection of Christ. So I want to read this part of scripture that we started with this morning. And then we'll just close in prayer. Romans 8, 37, again, in all things. Now, this could get everybody excited for a minute, okay? Just feel the love of these verses. 
That's God talking to you. Delight in who God is because of his word. So here we go. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Can I get an amen to that? Can I get a hallelujah for that? So let's close in prayer. Father, I just ask that <clears throat> the power of your resurrection would come completely. Help us understand its power. Father, help us reach out to you today. Help us reach out to you in a way we've never done before. Change our hearts. Change the way we respond to you today, Father. Father, may your face shine upon us and give us peace. And all God's people said, Amen. That's right. That's how we conclude all our services at the Vine, that God's face will shine upon us and give us peace, even in these days of the pandemic. I can't tell you how much I'm, I'm grateful that you connected with us today. I'm so grateful that you just are with us during these pandemic times. There's going to be a lot, a lot greater things happening. But we've got a whole lot, a lot of cool things planned once we do meet together. But right now, at 1045, we're going to start our Zoom Forgiveness Bible Studies. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Sherry, for those kind words. We miss you guys, too. Can I get an amen? Amen. I'll see you next week.